Hey guys, Big Dave here for Tales of Talara. It is Monday, and that means it's time for Warfronts. Yes, Warfronts! Exclamation mark. Warfronts is Tales of Talara's show dedicated to helping the Rift PVE player feel a little bit more comfortable in PvP Warfronts. How do we hope to accomplish that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Actually, we will watch my horrendous failures in Warfronts, and I will attempt to analyze my mistakes and become a better player. In addition to that, we will follow these four main guidelines. Let's take a look at the guidelines now. If you want more information on the guidelines, check the pilot episode, episode zero. You'll find it on the YouTube channel, and it will give you much more information on each individual guideline. Well, I'm glad everyone could join me for this episode. This is episode two. Episode two will be our first foray into the Codex. For those of you who are leveling up and encountering the Codex for the first time, it is a control point map, unlike Black Garden that had a centralized uh, control object that you fought over. Individual points need to be captured in this map. Let's take a look at the map, and I'm going to do a real quick breakdown on how everything shakes out in this map. I'm just going to blow through this. I'm going to try to get through it quickly. Use the visual aids on the screen. This is just really a primer. It's not intended to teach you the, the total ins and outs or any strategy, um, really. It's just intended to teach you the layout. This is for players coming from Black Garden. You just hit level 20, and you queue up, and wow, this time you notice there's a new zone. There's a new war front. Codex, what is this? What is it all about? That's what I'm going to tell you right now now. Okay, spawns. We're going to spawn in the south corners, southwest for the Guardians, southeast for the Defiance. Now, spread across the map in basically a sort of a cross shape is a series of control points. That's what makes this map different. It's a control point map. As each side exits their spawn, they're going to head north. Each side then encounters a, a pretty easy to grab and easy to hold control point. These two points are, are gimmies. They're basically laid out for each side, easier to defend and easy to grab because of the proximity to your spawn. In the south, accessible only through a rickety old bridge that is connected to a, a little island in the middle of a lake, is the vault. Now the vault is probably the most heavily contested point, not by battles, but verbally contested. Um, a lot of people consider the vault a waste of time. We'll get into that a little bit more later, but the vault is in the south. Alright, in the north we have the Codex. Yes, the namesake for the whole darn warfront, the Codex. It's the sacred relic that we're all fighting over. So, the Codex is, is uh, accessible either on a uh, elevated path or on a flat path. So you can either go up these craggy, rocky sort of uh, little outcroppings and uh, look down on the control point, or you can run in across the uh, uh, road on the ground, and you can access it uh, at the same level as the control point. This makes for some outstanding battles. The other thing that makes for outstanding battles, besides the bi-level fighting surface, is the fact that the codex, as a control point, is worth more points than any other individual point. For holding the codex, you get five points every time the score ticks. Every other point only gives you three. This means that everybody wants to have the codex. The codex automatically gives you an advantage. The codex plus your gimme point, the one that's just north of your spawn, equals victory. Now granted, it's a boring, long, holding, conservative victory, but it's a victory. So. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a match in the Codex. It's going to be a little chopped up because matches in the Codex can now go 20 minutes, and I just don't have 20 minutes in this video, especially after all this rambling. So we're going to take a look at this, and what you're going to see is how very recent changes in patch 1.2.1 to the Codex have, have, in my opinion, radically changed how we need to approach it. Now, I'm no expert, but the old strategy, that conservative strategy of Codex plus one, because of changes, now seems to be a little bit less bulletproof. You'll see what I mean in the video. Hey, let's get to the action. This is my Rogue, main spec into Marksman. Again, this is a PvE spec. Uh, I may or may not have some talents which lend themselves to PvP, but I really haven't taken anything specifically for PvP. So as the timer ticks down, let's talk about the changes that came in patch 1.2.1, specifically the changes that came to the Codex. 
The biggest change without a doubt is the change on the capture time. So once you cap a point, you have to wait a certain amount of time before you control it. So the big change here is now it's only 30 seconds. That control waiting period is only 30 seconds. So your opponent only has 30 seconds to grab it back or to steal it if you're capping it from neutral. That's huge. That timer used to be, I think, 60 seconds. I'm fairly confident in saying 60 seconds. And that, I mean, that meant you could ride from the other side of the map to any point and uh, interrupt something. Now, that has really changed the way that this map plays, and I think we're going to see that play out in the coming weeks. People are going to have to re-examine their strategies, and I wouldn't doubt that the reason for this change was this sort of super conservative turtling strategy of grabbing the codex and one other point and just defending those uh, like a beast. So the other change, and you're seeing that right now, is the alternative exit from the spawn. That's very nice. Now there's another way out of the spawn in case you're being camped. Not nearly as game-changing as the uh, first change of the, uh, the cap time, uh, but a nice change nonetheless. So let's take a look at this, and what we're going to see in this uh, particular episode, you're going to see a gentleman uh, suggest through his quote pro tips the best way for us to win this match and being that I am a noob I am new at PvP or I'm not new at it but I'm very unskilled at it generally when someone feels like they need to take a, a role of leadership in a war front I usually try to follow them just so at least there's two of us on the same page not a bunch of uh, people running around doing their own thing so He's going to give us a couple of pro tips, and we're going to go ahead and ride out this strategy. Now, this works for a while, and you're going to see as we move forward in this, I'm going to cut around in this video uh, because we're short on time uh, given the 15-minute uh, YouTube cap. So we, we get the codex and we get our point. Hey, fantastic. Sounds great. We're going to win this, right? We're going to hold these two points and we're going to just, we're going to win this. It is ours. Okay. Well, that goes great for a while. And here you can see me. I mean, I'm just wailing on some people, um, doing various, you know, doing various spamming of my, of my abilities, especially my uh, ability, my, uh, I forget what the hell it's called. Uh, fan out I think it's called that hits a bunch of people just spamming that like there's no tomorrow just wailing on people and this is gonna work for a while and uh, eventually because of those reduced capture times it breaks and I think what we're seeing here is the exact reason that these capture times were reduced so eventually they're going to get past and they're going to get our gimme point, the statue. They're going to get it away from us. And when they do cap it away, that starts a downhill slide. So eventually I'm going to go and I'm going to try and ninja the point back. I managed to grab it, but we overcompensate. Because we're not communicating as a team, we overcompensate. And a lot more of us go there and most of us abandoned abandon the codex. Big mistake. So with the codex abandoned, the other team manages to grab it. And over the course of a very long, drawn-out game, we manage to go from a significant lead at mid-game to a crushing defeat. And this is why I say I think we're going to have to reevaluate how it is that we play uh, codex. You've got this guy in the beginning who is saying the vault is worthless. He's encouraging people away from the vault, uh, encouraging people to grab these two points and just hold them. Well, now you can have a point sn uh, snatched away from you so quickly. I just don't think it works. Again, I'm not the best player. I'm not some PvP general who knows everything to do out on the uh, on the battlefront, on the on the war front. But this is my opinion, and I think you're seeing it in action here. Hey, maybe you're seeing it in your games of the Codex. Now that the capture point is so, the the capture time is so small, people are snatching points, and once that sort of spiraling chaos starts, it it really takes a team of a bunch of individuals, and it scatters them to the wind. You know, we were able to hold for a while as a team. Several of us staying at the Codex, uh, several of us staying at uh, the Statue. But eventually, the other team smartens up. They come in with a very large force, and they snatch the Statue away. 
and that breaks our lines, and it all goes downhill from there. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. It's been a little bit of a strange episode. Um, I didn't really get um, an extremely usable match when I did my uh, recording sessions. I did two matches. Uh, the first was this crushing defeat uh, due to people using the old-style strategy, and the other one was actually a nice win, but it was only about half a game, and uh, that win was uh, a three-cap win. And it was very difficult to hold the points, but we managed to win with a three cap. So things are changing when it comes to Codex. It's it's an exciting time because it's it's redefining. It's kind of like that point in the Black Garden when everybody realized it's not really that efficient to take the Fang and run it way back up the hill to your spawn and hold it there. That you're actually better off sticking in the pit close to the middle if you can. Um, I think it's that sort of a revelation time now. Uh, and I think that in a few months, we're going to look back on the two-cap strategy, and we are going to kind of feel the same way. When you see someone saying, oh, two-cap it, two-cap it, codex plus one, codex plus one, it's not going to be viable anymore. But maybe I'm totally wrong, maybe I'm off base, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. If so, let me know. All right, guys, I've been Big Dave, and you've been watching my failed exploits in PvP on the weekly show Warfronts. This has been Episode 2, Rogue Marksman in the Codex. And next week, next week, a big surprise. Not going to tell you this time. It's, well, wait, let me, let me temper your expectations. Not a surprise like, hey, kids, there's going to be a surprise. And you get there, and there's like a clown or a Nintendo Wii or something. I mean a surprise as in... I'm going to spin the wheel on the day of. I'm going to pick a random character of mine and a random battleground. <laughs> so don't get your hopes up. It's not like I'm suddenly going to be doing something awesome. It's going to be the same fail PvP as always. It's just going to be a random surprise character. All right, guys. Uh, I think you know by now I'm more than a YouTube channel, talesoftolara.com. Check it out, please. Lots of good content on there. We are weekly on the Talara Vistas, great beauty uh, great beauty shots of the world of Talara. A little bit of lore, a little bit of information thrown in about these uh, various vistas that I do find in the world. All right, guys, take it easy.